when Jesus died, he died for us. He felt what we felt. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He did it for us. So when Trump is facing all these things, he's doing it for us in our place. Jesus Christ died for my sins. Jesus died for me. And so I, it connects in my brain that way. Like, okay, he's doing this for us as a country to make the changes we need to make. And he's the target where we don't have to be. As Election Day approaches, Donald Trump is embracing his own version of Christianity and the campaign trail. Our next guest says the goal is simple, to transform the Republican Party into the Church of Trump, one rally at a time. I want to welcome New York Times political correspondent Michael Bender. He wrote the book, Frankly, We Did Win the Election, the inside story of how Trump lost. And the New York Times piece, The Church of Trump, and Stuart Stevens joined us, a veteran Republican strategist who is now with the Lincoln Project. Michael, can we start with this article? I mean, you took my doors off. You have attended these rallies, met his supporters. This is different than the Trump rallies of 2016. What do we need to know about Trump and this new strain of Christianity and Trumpism? Yeah, thanks. I mean, I, I think this is a, there's, a, there's sort of a bigger picture here and, and, and a more narrow one. I mean, the, when it comes to Trump's rallies, uh, what, what's different here is over the past year or so, he's been refining the end of these rallies. We, we've all known for a long time as a kind of volatile, uh, raucous, off, uh, you know, off script um, uh, uh, kind of uh, rock concert show. Um, and now uh, there's, there's a very big mood shift right at, right at the end. The last 10 or 15 minutes, it's it's um, uh, it's very somber. Uh, uh, ambient music fills the uh, fills the event, um, and Trump talks in a in, in a in a kind of whispery voice and in a tightly scripted kind of uh, creed of the political movement uh, that he's uh, that he's leading in, uh, among conservatives, and and his followers here are have become effectively his congregation in these last few minutes. Some will uh, bow their heads or or you know hold uh, their folded hands close to their chest, almost as if they're as if they're praying uh, along with Trump. And I, I think what this shows is is how he is uh, really. Uh, you, you, demanding you know he's demands sort of these tides of absolute loyalty from every level of the party we're seeing it whether he's twisting arms uh, in congress uh replacing loyalists with people uh, even more loyal to him at the republican national committee and then here at the rank and file uh, level uh he's keeping up the the, the enthusiasm of his base um uh, by leading into the uh, this sort of uh, kind of uh, church-like experience at the rallies. But how did this happen? Is this all because of Roe versus Wade? I mean, you spoke to a woman who said that Donald Trump has been chosen by God. Yeah, I mean, the evangelicals have always been a big part of uh, a Republican presidential candidates for our, you know, our life, the better part of our lifetimes. What's different here with Trump compared to Bush or with Reagan uh, is that is that evangelicals largely view him as their greatest champion. They feel that he is delivered for him, for them, um, more than and than these other Republican leaders. And uh, yes, Roe versus Wade, uh, the Supreme Court that overturned Roe versus Wade is at the top of the list. But that list goes on and on and on. There are there are lots of uh, uh, policies that he has and his administration have implement had implemented during his four years. Um, that that put evangelicals right in the in, in the center of the um, it was it was it was, their, it was effectively their their wish list. Stuart, you have worked on multiple Republican campaigns for actual men of faith. Have you ever seen anything like this? Um, no, you know, uh, it's not uncommon for candidates to uh, say that they think that God wants them to win. Um, you know, I, I, this happened back when Mitt Romney was running and someone um, close to Romney observed that he didn't think God was watching the tracking. Um, you know, it also goes to the question of like, what happens when these people lose? Does that mean that like God was not for them? Um, but look, you know, I, I think there's something here that uh, we really need to talk about, and that's race. Um, the, the white evangelicals are for Donald Trump, but one of the biggest, strongest groups against Donald Trump are black evangelicals. So I think it sort of raises the question, is it about being evangelical as much as it is about race? 
And I know that there was an uh, African-American gentleman there at the beginning, but overwhelmingly, these are white rallies that are happening here. Um, I, you know, I believe that Trump has always seemed like a, a televangelist. There's something about him that is sort of a Jimmy yeah. Swiker type. Um, so this is part of just when, when a party collapses and it has no core and it has no policy, it sort of becomes this, this article of faith that you have to believe in Donald Trump because you, there's really no policy here. There's no party that supports it. Um, and I, I think this is very typical in autocratic movements. Democrats clearly see this, Stuart, as an opportunity to attract voters because none of this is rooted in truth, especially they think they can get moderate or swing voters. But can Democrats actually take advantage of it in this age of misinformation? I mean, Joe Biden is an actual devout Catholic, but you would never know it listening to all sorts of Republicans talking about him. Stuart? Well, look, I, I think that I think most people uh, are uncomfortable with this. I think that most people find it creepy, majority of people. Um, you know, there is this, this hardcore for Trump that increasingly becomes uh, demanding of you to break faith with what it means to be an American and an American tradition. If you go back to his announcement, which is in Waco, that was really a declaration of war against the United States as we know it today. And when he opens these rallies with these, uh, not to pledge allegiance to the United States, but these uh, con convicts now who are convicted uh, for trying to overthrow the government, when they sing their own anthem, it's sort of a separate world. Now, this has happened with Trump flags versus the American flag. Um, and I, I think that that is intense, but I think it's reducing his appeal. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.